When you're building Unity games, should you use events or Unity events? That's a question that I get all the time, and that's what I'm going to answer today. We're going to go over what events are, what Unity events are, what the differences are, why you might want to use one in place of the other, or where you could use both. I'm going to give you some simple, concrete examples of how you can use them in a game to make really cool things happen, and show you the code behind it, and then make that available for download as well. Before I get started, though, if you have a preference, if you really like using just regular events, or or you prefer Unity events, drop that in the comments below. I'm curious to know what people are using before they get started and see if this video maybe changes anybody's mind. Also, if you don't mind, please hit that like button and the subscribe. It really helps. I appreciate it a lot. Or just drop in a comment and say hello. To demonstrate the difference between Unity events and events, I've set up a simple example scene where I've got a character that is a collector and wants me to go collect red gems. And as I pick up red gems, they will send an event back to him that'll do some updates to the screen. Let's watch and see what happens. So I go pick up a gem and a little bit of text appears and updates. Pick up another gem and it keeps updating. And if I get that yellow one, I should expect it to not update because it says pick up the red gems. No update. And I get these last two red ones and he's jumping in for joy and the spikes beyond him are clear so I can run over here and go do something, maybe go pick up this giant star that I can't actually pick up. So let's talk about how this is set up, where we use events in a setup like this versus Unity events, and why we would really want to use Unity events here and not just use regular C Sharp events. So let's stop and take a look at how this all actually works. Here you can see we've got our scene set up with a player, a little camera set up using Cinemachine and a target group camera to follow him. And then we've got a collector object, and the collector object has a sprite renderer for his little alien sprite. But then I've got this collector script on it, and you'll see that it's got an on complete event. This is our Unity event. We'll dive into it in a little bit. And then it's got this list of gatherables. Let's open up the script and take a look at it. So here it is in its entirety. You can see that it's relatively short. There's not a lot to it. And some of it down at the bottom is actually just editor stuff to help us out with setting things up. So let's go through what this class is doing, how it's using events and how it's using Unity events, how that differs and how we hook it all together. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here and take a look first at the couple serialized fields. We have one for our text. That's for that text that's saying how many to update. Get three more, get two more, get one more. We have a list of gatherables. And if I go back into Unity, you notice that that's this list right here or this array of gatherable objects. It's actually a list because I recently learned that you can serialize lists and arrays the same. So now I just go back and forth for a little while as I try to cement that into my brain. So we'll open up the script one more time and look down here at the next field. It's this on completed event. And I'd mentioned that that is our Unity event. That's this thing right here, on complete. And what this is, is really an area where I can define a list of actions or things that I want to happen when my on complete occurs. So whenever I invoke the on complete event, then I, all of the things that I've added in this list here will run. And I can add more things by hitting the plus or I could hit the minus and just remove them. In fact, let's clear them all out and go through the process of adding them for anybody who's not familiar with how to add things to a Unity event. So here it says list is empty and I can hit plus. And the first thing that I need to do is assign an object. So on the left side, you'll see that it says runtime only. There's also an editor and runtime option. I always use runtime only. And then there's a field for an object. We're gonna go select the spikes. So if I find my spikes, I can click it and just drop it right in here. Once I do that, all of the components that are on the spikes will show up here in this list. So right now I've got five because if I go select my spikes, I've got five components. There's transform, sprite renderer, kill on enter, polygon collider, and game object. They're all going to have game object. So that's the fifth one. You see four, but there's five because of the game object. So we'll go click on it again. And game object was the option that we had checked. And I just check set active, which takes in a Boolean parameter. So it takes a true or false. The default is false, which means that it sets the spike to not active. Then I added another event handler right here with that plus. And then we need to assign something to it. And in this case, I was updating my what was it, the remaining text? Or no, the pop-up text. So the pop-up text right there. And we're going to set the text by just selecting text mesh pro U GUI. And I believe there's a set text or a text one. So I have to find it. There we go, text. And then we set the value to, well, hey, thanks again, exclamation mark. And then the final thing that I was doing was changing his sprite renderer. And I don't want to do that. I'm going to change it up. I'm going to make it so that this gem turns on instead. So 
instead of um, the sprite renderer changing, he'll make this gem appear and just start falling down. So I'm gonna turn the gem off. I've moved it into that position. Go select my collector. And then I'm gonna hit plus, add one more event, assign that gem yellow, select the game object one again, and set active and set that to true. Now it's also worth noting that I could call my own events or my own methods, not events really, but my own methods on my classes or my scripts if I wanted to. Here I'm really just setting text and setting properties or setting an active state, but there's nothing that prevents me from invoking a method that takes in a parameter with a number like add points and passing in a value of five if it takes in a number parameter. So here we go, I've got my updated version. I'm gonna hit play, just watch it happen real quick so that we see the gem fall down. You can see how it kind of works, there we go. All beautiful, and then we're gonna go back into the code. Let's look at how we actually invoke this event now and then dive into what regular events are and why we might wanna use a regular event versus a Unity event. So let's take a look at the code again. Remember, we have our text and we have our list of collectibles. It's currently named gatherables. These are all of the things that we need to go gather. And then we have a list of collectible named collectibles. I think I actually wanna rename this. So I'm gonna hit Control RR and rename this to collectibles remaining. This is really the collectibles that I haven't gathered yet. So in our on enable, what we're doing is turning this list into a new list that's a copy of our gatherables. Really what we're saying is copy this list of gatherable objects and we're gonna remove from this list as we go along. And once that list is empty, we're gonna fire off our event. So we're creating a copy of this list so we can just remove things from it. Then we do the magic of events here on line 21 and 22. So we loop through all of our collectibles remaining. We use the for each loop, which is gonna give us an instance or a reference to each of the collectibles in the collectibles remaining list. And then we register for the on pickup event by using the plus equals syntax and assigning it to handle pickup. What this is, is registering for an event with a callback and I'm gonna hit F12 to go look at that on pickup event of the collectible. Remember, this is of this collectible class right here. So I hit F12, and here you can see my event, which is set up quite a bit different from a Unity event. It says public event action has a type of collectible and it's just named on pickup. There's no Unity event, there's no serialized field. We have this event keyword that's a little bit different and the action and this parameter type, a lot going on here. So what's really happening here is we're setting up this event that we can pass back in a collectible to. And you're gonna see that here on line 13. First, let's take a look at the on trigger enter 2D. So what are we doing here is just check to see if we have a player. If a player is the thing that walked into us, so if we get a player component, then we call the on pickup method by using the question mark dot invoke and then passing in this. Now, what we're actually doing here is invoking this method and passing in ourself as a reference parameter or a parameter so that when we need to remove ourself, we'll have a reference to it. You'll see that in just a moment. But the question mark dot part is important because normally, or in the old days, what we would have to do is check for null references on an event. We don't have to do this with a Unity event. So we would do something like this. If on pickup is not equal to null, then we would say on pickup and pass in this. Now that syntax works perfectly fine, but the shorthand for it now just allows us to do it with the question mark dot and invoke. This will do the exact same thing. It'll call that on pickup event, but it will only do it if there is something registered and it's not null. Again, a unity event won't be null, so you don't need the question mark dot. It won't hurt, but it won't do anything extra. The last thing that we do is just set the collectible to not active. And this, this is what's happening on our gems. Our gems get set to not active every time we pick them up. So let's go back to the registration. Here we register for our event and we register with this handler, the handle pickup method. And you'll see that right below. Notice that the parameter here matches the parameter in our event. If I add another parameter to this method, like int number, we're gonna have a compiler error. In fact, it should pop up any second, there we go, saying that the overload doesn't match the delegate. The delegate takes an action of collectible and my method takes a collectible and a number. So I need to remove that parameter. And then let's look at what happens when on pickup is called. Our handle pickup will run, it'll pass in this collectible, which is the object that's being picked up. And then we remove it from the collectibles remaining list. So we start off with, what is it, eight? And we go down to seven things. Then we call update text. I'm gonna scroll down here and just look at update text. Update text just says, 
text.set text, and we count the number of things remaining in our list. So we've removed them. We went from eight to seven. We say, hey, set text to seven more. And then we turn the text off if we get down to zero things. So if we have zero things or we have the full count of things available in our list, so we haven't picked up anything, then we turn the text off. We just turn it on when we have some number of remaining things more and we've picked something up at least. Now let's go back to the Unity event because this is where it kind of all ties together. So finally, after we pick the item up, if we're out of items, we've picked up our last one, we call the onCompleted event by using onCompleted event dot invoke. Again, we don't need the question mark because the Unity events won't be null themselves, just their registered callbacks could be empty. So that's really all there is to it. That's all you need to make this happen. And it's very easy to kind of extend this and start building out more things. If I wanted to have something that fires off, like on the first pickup, I could have a thing that says like, if collectibles remaining dot count is equal to the gatherables dot count minus one, then on picked up first event dot invoke. And I could set up a unity event like that. that just fires off when I pick up the first item. And I could do the same in just about any scenario. And hopefully you can start to see places where we could set this up to just fire off things that we can hook up in game and add some cool customization and cool level design with. All right, so hopefully you've gotten the idea that you really should be using both of these in most projects. You should use Unity events for things where you want to do stuff that's specific with the scene or one-off events or one-off types of things that you're going to be doing in your game that are really specific to scenes or specific to a single object where you don't want to write code for it or you don't need to necessarily write code to go toggle an object on and off or change the text of an object that you're going to do once. And you want to use regular events or C-sharp events or delegates when you're doing things that you don't want to have to go hook up in the editor. You don't want to have to go sign this gem or assign this collector to every single gem and say, hey, gem, go do something to this collector. You want to be able to say, hey, go get all of the collectible things and just register for an event on them and do it that way so that I don't have to go in and set things up. I don't have to go find objects. I don't have to go deal with these references and manage this stuff. It's very easy for this stuff to break if you have a lot of references in Unity events to control your game. It's super simple for things to accidentally get renamed or deleted and recreated and break everything. So I like to use Unity events when we're doing something in the scene, something custom, something that's a one-off, and regular C-sharp events for things that are working in code where I want one piece of code or one object to listen for a state change on another object, and I want that to be the norm. Now I wanna finish this up with this little context menu part at the bottom, because anybody that saw it might be curious, what is it, how does it work, why is that even there? So here you'll see that we have a method called autofill collectibles that sets up the gatherables by finding all of the objects of type collectible, so it finds everything that's a collectible in our scene, and then it uses a link statement to filter them by name, to only get down to the ones that have the word red in them. I use the two lower in case I've put uppercase reds in their names. And then we call to list to convert this collection or queryable into a list so that we can assign it to gatherables. And if I go into Unity, you can see how that works. So here I've got my list of gatherables. I could zero this out, clear it out completely, right click and, um, oh, not right click there, right click on the collector and hit autofill collectibles and it's gonna find all of the red ones. If I go rename this gem yellow to gem yellow red and do it again, let's try it. Select my collector, right click, autofill collectibles, see that it doesn't find it, but if I turn it on, bam, now he finds it. That's because it doesn't, find object of type doesn't find things that are turned off. Just kind of wanted to show that too. So that's all that is. And it's just a simple little trick to be able to find all of the things. We could put in some search filters, some sorting. Another really cool and easy way to do this, by the way, so that we don't even have to have this list of collectibles or gatherables is to just make these all children of the guy. So I could select all of these gems. In fact, I could take this whole gem section and just make it children of the collector. And then I could just use the get components and children. So I could change it to be get components and children. And now it would find the hidden objects or the disabled objects. And I wouldn't necessarily need to have that reference. Oh, got to add the S there. I wouldn't need to have the references to the um, collectibles being serialized or the gatherables. 
This could be private and I wouldn't even need to go assign it. I could just do that in on enable instead of down in this method. So I could clean it up and shorten it up even more, but I want to show that you don't necessarily have to have the things be related to be hooked up with events. They could be totally unrelated and just have some other reference to it. All right, that finishes this video. Hopefully this was helpful and you've kind of got a better idea of when to use events and Unity events. If you've changed your mind about what to use, please drop a comment below. Also, if you have tips or ideas, suggestions on um, other ways to use Unity events and events or just thoughts on the subject, let me know. And I wanted to say a special thanks to everybody on Patreon and all my subscribers and YouTube people. You guys are awesome. Um, I think that's it. Bye.